The case of Lauren Spirer. More than 12 years after Indiana University student Lauren Spirer went out for a night with friends, her whereabouts are still unknown. The grief is so paralyzing that her parents have stopped doing interviews about their daughter. Lauren's family has hired private investigator Mike Saravolo. The former NYPD detective led the Zodiac Killer Task Force in the 1990s and is the senior investigator at his firm. I saw it on every news channel, Saravolo said of the case. Spirer disappeared after a long night out with friends on June 3, 2011. That night, she followed a common path for IU students living downtown. She started at her apartment in Smallwood Plaza. Spirer texted her boyfriend, Jesse Wolf, saying she had plans to go to bed. Instead, Spirer went out to Kilroy's sports bar with friends, using a fake ID to drink. Witnesses said Spirer was visibly intoxicated when she left the bar, forgetting her shoes and phone. Spirer was with Corey Rossman, who was seen on unreleased surveillance video walking with Spirer back to her apartment building. When they arrived at Spirer's building, Rossman was confronted by others who knew her. They suggested to Corey, hey, you know she's in bad shape. Why don't you just make sure she gets back to a room down the hall? According to police and reporting from Indianapolis, Rossman resisted, and one of the men hit him in the face. Then, Rossman and Spirer took a five-minute walk to Rossman's apartment at the five North townhomes. Based on what the men told authorities, Rossman's roommate, Mike Beth, saw they were both drunk. He helped put Rossman to bed after he threw up and tried to convince Spirer to stay on the couch. Beth said he was studying at the time and asked his neighbor, Jay Rosenbaum, to help with Spirer. Rosenbaum tried to convince her to stay, but she ultimately left the apartment barefoot with no phone. Rosenbaum said he saw Spirer walk to 11th Street and College Avenue. It was the last time anyone saw her. The next day, Spirer's boyfriend reported her missing when no one could get in touch with her. But after that, Saravolo said Wolf and the other boys Spirer was with that night became incooperative. Multiple news reports said Wolf helped look for Spirer in the initial days after her disappearance but then quickly left town. Wolf also passed a privately administered lie detector test, though he declined to take one administered by the police. Rossman called the police on Saravolo and his team when they went to try to question him at his apartment. Corey Rossman has not been cooperative with us from day one, Saravolo said. The only one to respond was Mike Beth, who said he had nothing to add. On top of that, Saravolo said police in Bloomington, Indiana, have also been resistant to working with him. We were told in no uncertain terms by police chief Michael Dekoff that he would not be interested in having help, he would certainly not be willing to share any information with us. Reporters in Indianapolis reported that some neighbors said they hadn't seen police or been questioned by them for 10 days, even though police records indicated they spoke to nearby residents the day after Spirer disappeared. In a statement, the department said that the investigation remains very active, and, over the last three to four years, investigators have received over 800 tips and executed at least 10 search warrants. As for Saravolo, he believes three things could have happened to Spirer. One possibility is an opportunistic attack from someone who took advantage of Spirer's drunken state. Another is her boyfriend doing something to her out of jealousy. Saravolo's third theory has to do with Spirer's health. Lauren, who had a bad heart and may have been overserved that night, could have passed. Her heart could have given out while she was in their apartment in Rosenbaum's apartment, and that they concealed her body, he theorized. Spirer had a heart condition called Long QT syndrome, which can cause dangerous heart arrhythmias and in some cases may lead to cardiac arrest. Spirer was also petite, just 4 feet, 11 inches tall and weighing only 95 pounds. However, the men and their parents have maintained they did nothing wrong and have cooperated with police. None of the men have been named as suspects. Like, subscribe, and comment down below what you think may be responsible for the disappearance of Lauren Spear.